Good morning YouTube, this is the Pond Diver with another real life DIY. Today we're going to be discussing container gardening. two most common staples in the suburban garden which are tomatoes and peppers there'll be a few other vegetables strawberries onions garlic green beans cucumbers but we're not really going to get into that today we're just going to stick with the staples I was always an earth gardener till about five or six years ago when I built some raised beds but just never was satisfied with the amount of maintenance and the yield that my raised beds produced so I moved over to container gardening and have never looked back. It's just you need to be careful and not allow your plants to become root bound. If your container is too small and you have a plant like a tomato, which is a very hungry, very thirsty plant, it can become root bound very quickly. That sets up for disease and low yield. There is an investment in the very beginning. You have to have the container, you need good soil and fertilizer. Peppers and tomatoes are heavy consumers, which means that every bit of the fertilizer, the nutrients that's in the soil will be absorbed rapidly into the plant. I know that miracle Grow sells potting soil that claims it feeds up to six months. It may do that with potatoes, but it certainly will not be the case with peppers and tomatoes. I use bone meal, blood meal, and Osmocote. I mix that in all together in the beginning of the process in my, in my soil, and then I plant on top of that, and that is an extended period of plant life. Now I also have three hanging baskets and you have to be careful on which vegetables you place in hanging baskets but determine whether or not your plant is indeterminate or determinate. That will determine whether or not you're able to plant in a, ba in a hanging basket. So there are some species of tomatoes like your cherry cherry style tomatoes, the Amazing Million, the Sweet 100, the Lozano tomatoes, they can all go in a hanging basket. As long as the basket has a wide enough base, at least 12 inches and is fairly deep. You typically find these types of baskets at nurseries where they have the four prongs. The three prong is a little too small, four prong is pretty much what you need. And keep in mind with a hanging basket that's not sitting on the soil, you'll need to water it consistently. You have to water container vegetables consistently as it is, but one day will kill a plant that's in a hanging basket. Watering consistently is key. You can overwater these plants easily. You can also underwater them. And there's different signs, and throughout the season, you'll know if you're not getting enough water. A good technique to do is to stick your finger into your first knuckle and if it's still dry at your first knuckle, you're underwatering. A lot of times with tomatoes and peppers, if you overwater, the tips of the leaves, the foliage will turn yellow. And that is because your root base is rotting. And that is death sentence for the plant. When you water your containers, you need to be very particular about how you do it. Uh, a lot of times you'll see people they'll have sprinklers, oscillating sprinklers and things like that and they'll water for about 30 minutes and be satisfied and walk away but that is not sufficient enough and it also damages the plant. Think about a magnifying glass and then when, probably when you were a youngster you probably took a magnifying glass and put it on something and you drew it back using the sunlight and you drew it down to a bead and it burned whatever you had the magnifying glass up next to. If you have a droplet of water on a leaf, remember that droplet is rounded like this. 
and if it's rounded it makes a concave lens and all of the light becomes focused down onto that leaf and that little bitty spot there and what it's doing is it's burning the leaf there, you think about it there's an old survival technique how do you make fire from ice well that's simple you take the ice you hold it in your hand and you make a ball out of it to where it's rounded and concave you can hold then the ice above your whatever it is you're going to ignite and use it as a lens and focus it in and sure enough you can start a fire with ice that's the same type physical characteristic as the water will have on the foliage so keep that in mind whenever you're using hose water and you're not on a well and you live in a suburban area like I do the water that you get has came from a treatment facility. In that treatment facility, they add chemicals like chlorine and fluoride. Well, chlorine is an algae killer. Algae is a plant. So it can be a true statement that when you water with your water hose from your tap, you're actually stunning the growth of your plant life. I know a lot of people don't have any other methods of doing it or watering and if that's if that's the method that you have it works it just can stunt it's always best to use natural rainwater if you can now here we have some rain catchers and that um, have spigots and we can go around and water the individual plants so keep that in mind if you are using tap water to water with then it actually has chemicals that at the plant kill bacteria and kill healthy algae that plants need to grow. There is a world of difference between natural water and treated water. A lot of times it's not feasible to capture your own water and it seems to be a little bit more labor intensive but your plants will appreciate it and so will your yield. It pays off in the end. Lastly, when it comes to watering, consider the time of the day that you're going to water. It's never a good idea to water late in the afternoon. It's always best to water in the cool of the morning. That way it gives your plant sustainability throughout the hot day. Watering late at night leaves a lot of room for invaders to creep in, root rot and things of that nature because there's nothing there to help rapidly absorb that water or burn the additional water off. So, let's recap about watering. Use natural water when you can, water in the first of the day, and try your best not to allow the water to make contact with the plant foliage. Let's talk about fertilizing, plant sustainability. You're starting off with a good mix with your bone meal, blood meal, and osmocote in the very beginning of your plant. High quality potting mix, not garden soil or topsoil. If you're in a container, you need to use potting mix. It has peat moss, peat moss is spongy, it retains water. And that's a good healthy kickstarter, but over time, those fertilizers will be absorbed by the plant. You need to consistently supply it with additional fertilizer throughout the growing season. A simple resolution to this is miracle Grow additive. You want to try to maintain what I call the three fives, 5% 5 phosphate, 5% 5 nitrate, and 5% sulfate. The miracle Grow comes a little shy on sulfate, but it has other additives in it uh, copper, magnesium, things like that, that the plant can also benefit from. What you have to keep in mind with the liquid miracle Grow is that you do not need to contact the foliage with it, and it's something that you have to repeat a considerable amount. And there's no need to continue to add Osmocote because it is, it's a time release. In the beginning of the season, Osmocote is fine to add. Uh, if you want to sprinkle just a very little on the top of the surface, that's fine as well. When you're halfway through the growing season, 
you can burn the plant, so be mindful of not over fertilizing. And the truth will be in the foliage if you're over fertilizing. You'll see the tips of the foliage will begin to curl in and they won't yellow, they'll brown. It'll look like your the plant is actually burning. At that point, you need to back off. Continue to water, try to flush some of that extra fertilizer out and everything should be okay. Just no need to over fertilize, but there is a real need to continue to fertilize. There's a big difference in that. Weed control inside of a container is not difficult at all. It's a very confined space. Now, if you mow your lawn and you're not using a mulcher or a bag, if you have a, a side discharge on your lawnmower, seedlings will get airborne and they can plant themselves inside your container. So just be mindful of uh, constantly pulling those out of your container because they will also rob your plant of nutrients. Pruning and knowing how to prune is also key to an overall healthy plant. Now, we're not ready to prune at this time right now, but over the course of the season, when I make my next video update, I'll show you how to prune and it, it, pinching is always a terrible idea. You want to use a set of shears. If you, if you have those, they're fairly reasonable these days. Uh, scissors will work as well. You don't, want to, you don't want to cut too close to the stem, but the, what, especially tomatoes. Tomatoes will grow what we call feelers and, or suckers, and those suckers need to be removed because the suckers on the tomato plant will produce more chlorophyll, but it takes additional photosynthesis for the chlorophyll to produce, and it's robbing the rest of the plant. So the little sucker that you get on the side of the plant will need to be pruned or sheared. And we'll discuss that more in our next video update. So in this container series, we'll do a total of three. This will be the first one. Uh, the second one will be uh, on when we go to actually brace the plants, how we're going to put them up in either a lattice or some kind of stabilization to keep the plant still in case of a heavy wind or heavy yield will cause a plant to break. So you want the plant to be protected. And the third video will be on the, on the uh, harvesting. Now I hope you've got some beneficial information out of this video and if it helped you let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about container gardening, send them my way. I'll do my very best to answer you and if I don't have the answer there's plenty of resources out there we can come to a conclusion with. If this is your first time stopping by the channel I do appreciate it. If you're interested in DIY and real life reviews uh, click that subscribe button and click the bell for future videos. Until the next one. This is the Pond Diver.